are in listen only mode. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining our webinar this morning or this afternoon, wherever it is that you are located. Um, today we are discussing one of the newer features of SAP GTS, um, invoice integration. Our speaker today is Ashish. Ashish is a senior SAP consultant at Crypt with over 11 years experience in SAP implementations in the areas of global trade and supply chain management. Ashish is SAP certified and trained in the area of global trade services, and he's attended SAP trainings and led training specifically around SAP GTS invoice integration. Now on the next slide, I'll just quickly go over some housekeeping tips. Ashish, would you mind changing to the next slide? There we go, thanks. Um, on this slide, you can see a picture of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, this is where you will type in your questions if any questions arise during or following the webinar. Um, we'll address all questions at the end. We've reserved about five to 10 minutes to address anything that pops up. Um, if we don't get to your questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you following the webinar. Now on the next slide, um, just a quick introduction to Crypt. Crypt is an SAP consulting partner. We're operating globally with corporate headquarters in Santa Clara, California in the US. Uh, we have EMEA headquarters in Dublin, Ireland, and our APAC headquarters are in Bangalore, India. Uh, we do serve customers worldwide. Our aim as a company is to provide tangible value to our customers by bringing together systems and business experts as well as predefined content and solutions, either out of the box or fully customized. Now on the next slide, um, we'll just look at an overview of some of the resources available to you. Uh, we do have white papers and case studies, which you may download from our website. Um, you'll also see some images here of the SAP books that we've authored and published. Two of the latest books um, that are listed on here are um, serving as user's guides to SAP GTS 11.0. Uh, this is the latest version of GTS and the version that includes invoice in integration, uh, which we'll be covering today. Now on the next slide, um, this will basically speak through our track record with SAP implementations. I won't go too far into it, but um, we do really pride ourselves with our proven methodology and track record, and being known for delivering complex global implementations, both on time and within budget. And um, just on the next slide, uh, this is just a snapshot of some of our wonderful customers. Um, Ashish, there we go. There might just be a bit of a lag here. Um, but I'll go ahead and pass it off to Ashish, and he will go through our agenda and walk you through invoice integration. Hey, hi all. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. My name is Ashish Kalchanya, and uh, I'm working with Crypt uh, since 2015. As you know, this uh, webinar is scheduled for GTS Customs Invoice Functionality Overview, and uh, I will be walking through this solution. Agenda for this webinar is uh, introduction of this functionality. Then we will be discussing about system requirement and uh, configuration activities. We will discuss about review, new features, customs invoice tabs, work list from GTS systems. And then uh, we will uh, walk through the solution from system point of view uh, of this GTS customs invoice functionality. So uh, let's start uh, this. Uh, webinar main topic customs invoice uh, functionality as you know during a uh, domestic uh, goods shipment uh, we don't need customs invoice and uh, neither we pay import tax but when it comes to the shipment going out of country then customs authorities requires customs invoice uh, attached to the shipment so we can say for all the international uh, shipment we need customs invoice because customs invoice is a document which contains information about the shipment and shipment can't leave country without this one. Having said that customs invoice is a document that is an extending form and a document of commercial invoice and information like vendor details, external invoice number, EO details, value of goods, 
customs value currency product number and description quantity gross weight net weight and country of origin these all informations are available on customs invoice that's why customs invoice is very important document for from customs authorities perspective when we have international shipment like i said country of origin country of origin is most important data element which requires on customs invoice for customs authority to certify that goods country of origin value of good it is again another important data element which can carry uh, like all the goods value of uh, different different items from purchase order or scheduling agreement and value of goods can vary from scheduling agreement to po to get a time when vendor agrees on the value of goods with the organization the price may vary during actual sales or during actual import so due to that bro brokers always have challenges when when we'll be creating an import declaration they have to match exact price on that day in the cost from customs invoice to import declaration so now we have this customs invoice functionality available this new customs invoice functionality updated value of goods from commercial invoice to gts customs invoice and same is updated in the import declaration so that's introduction part of this customs invoice functionality and uh, this is a system requirement <coughs> so in case uh, anyone has to implement this functionality uh, then you need to have minimum uh, sap gts 11.0 with a service pack 6 and uh, we also need to upgrade uh, service pack uh, 30 in erp system because some function modules baddies and uh, new programs have been updated for customs invoice integration from erp to gts systems so this this is very important part of this functionality without this we will not be able to implement and test this functionality application programming interface sap has provided a, a, a api and this api can be used uh, for different functionality because what sap has provided is a, like a basic architecture of customs invoice functionality but from one organization to another organization it may vary that how they create commercial invoice in, in the gtrp system or outside erp system those processes can be integrated with sap gts customs invoice functionality using this function module recently uh, we had a customer where they do not create a commercial invoice in erp system but they create outside uh, sap system so we but they get idocs from outside system in erp system and we could use those idocs to integrate this commercial invoice uh, in ERP system, and then we could create a customs invoice in GTA system. So this API is very important uh, in case some kind of enhancements or customization is required to tweak the business as per the business process requirement. And this API is not only important for like interfaces, but in case uh, sometimes uh, every organization they have their own uh, some important fields they want to update in the GTA system in customs invoice. Those fields can also be uh, modified and we can up, uh, update from ERP system to GTA system, those fields and data information. This is the new tab uh, which you can see on my uh, desktop here, that customs invoice tab. This tab was not available and this is recently introduced by SAP system for this customs invoice functionality. Uh, it's up, it can yeah, it's appeared in import section so we can uh, come from gts area menu to import section and in import we have this invoice tab next to it we have display customs invoice functionality like whatever existing custom invoices are available in the gts we can display all the ones and we can edit it and we can create also manually customs invoice in case integration is not done then manual manual creation of custom invoice is also possible this is, an, this is again a new tab here customs invoice uh, when we create an import declaration we can create import declaration either prior to good receipt or post good receipt 
But as of now, uh, SAP has given this functionality for the import declaration process, which are created before good receipt. So in prior to good receipt import declaration, we have new tabs, custom invoice. We can have this uh, external number, external invoice number comes from our feeder system. We can input this feeder system's invoice number and with reference to that, we can create import declaration. So this is a work list uh, it's short from my system. Once uh, customs invoice uh, is uh, created in GTA system, that customs invoice appears in import declaration work list. From this work list, uh, we can create import declaration. And here we can see uh, there are two numbers, a one column number, the 9003948. This is our feeder system uh, billing document, it's an intercompany billing document. And another column number is 100007. That is GTS customs invoice document number. Then other informations are like that, which we used to get earlier also. Follow up details, quantities, purchase orders, vendors, all the details are same. But these numbers like customs invoice and feeder system invoice number, this is part of new functionality. So we can refer our commercial invoice from ERP system. That number will also be appear here. And GTS customs invoice number will come also come here. And with reference to that, we can create import declaration. These are the new fields uh, which we can see in the customs invoice. So it, it, the customs invoice document is a complete uh, kind of custom document. Uh, we know that whenever we say purchase document, it creates a compliance customs document in GTS system uh, for sales order and purchase order. So like that, whenever we, if we have activated this functionality for any billing document, like intercompany billing, so that, that intercompany billing document will create corresponding customs invoice document in GTS system. And all these fields will be available in the GTS customs invoice document. And these are a very important fields from customs authorities perspective. And these fields are also updated in import declarations. This is customs invoice tab. Uh, uh, if we want to display existing custom invoices from GTS system, we have this new transition code under same invoice tab. We can display all the existing customs invoices for particular foreign trade organization. And this is how it looks. Uh, this, custom, this is custom invoice document. Uh, it, uh, it's a custom invoice document a screen which we have captured from the existing document. We have general data, item overviews, amounts, and uh, these are the fields we'll be seeing in our uh, GTA system as well when we will start our demo session. This is item level details so that was header level details. So we have got both header and item level details. At item level details, also, we have many fields for like quantities, product number, description, purchasing documents, net value, value of goods. And so all this information we can use for our import declaration. So uh, this exchange would also we wanted to uh, display here because once customs invoice is used to create import declaration, how that invoice number of Yes, in import declaration. That invoice number updated at header level and at item level. At header level, it gets updated in invoice tab, and at item level, it's get updated placement tab. So you can say here, see here, placement tab, and this is the invoice. It's up in GI because it's like GI setting was not there. So this is invoice number at placement tab in import declaration, and here in invoice tab, also we can see the invoice document number. So this scheme it is from uh, ERP system. This is our ERP system intercompany billing document. When we save this intercompany billing document, our GTS customs invoice document is created here. So this is a feeder uh, system intercompany billing document and it's a GTS customs invoice reversal uh, document. What happens sometimes a uh, business user uh, creates billing document, but due to a number of reasons, they cancel the billing document. 
the same time the cancellation is also updated as a reversal flag in the gts customs document so that is very important to you once the reversal flag will be set in the, at uh, customs invoice document level a uh, user will not be able to refer the document for import declaration so it's like a synchronized update from ERP system to GPS. And this is the business flow, process flow uh, which we are going to show today in the SAP and GTA system. See how does this customs invoice functionally work. So mainly we'll be covering uh, intercompany stock transfer order. Uh, it starts from purchase order, which we will create an intercompany purchase order. And from that purchase order, we create outbound delivery we complete post code issue of the outbound delivery and then we create an intercompany billing document with reference to that uh, outbound delivery. Once we create intercompany billing document and save it, then it creates a custom document, uh, custom invoice document in GTS system. That custom invoice document can be used to create import declaration prior to good receipt in GTS system. So uh, now I'll be logging in system to, I, I've already created a uh, intercompany stock transfer outbound delivery uh, document. Uh, so I will not be creating an intercompany purchase order or outbound delivery. My ERP data is ready, but yeah, we can see here the purchase order. This is my intercompany. So, this is our US vendor. It's a kind of US company code representation. So, this vendor is representing US company code, and then we are seeing it in Germany plant. And with reference to this purchase order, we created this outbound delivery. And now, this outbound delivery carries this product number which will be shipping uh, this product from plant, uh, US plant and storage location. So I will just copy this outbound delivery and create intercompany billing document. If this process will remain same, uh, we are not going to change here. We just, so once we save it, it creates a feeder system intercompany billing document. This is my document number. I will take this uh, intercompany billing document number and check GTS system has created custom invoice document. So this is what I was uh, talking about. In import section, we have this new tab next to VB, this invoices tab. We can display existing custom invoices which are created from ERP system or our feeder system. So I will just paste my feeder system invoice document here. That is our external invoice document. So we can see here, it's created. This is our customs invoice document number in GTS 100054. And this external invoice number is our clear system intercompany billing document number. Let's display it. Yeah, so this is my actual invoice number. We can go back to see what is correct here. And right now we can see the custom invoice reversal flag is not set because the billing document is still there. We are not canceled the ERP billing document. Then we have other important uh, data available in this field like in Cotown's FT organization, which is importing these goods. Invoicing party is available. Vendor details are available here. And uh, we have item overview available. 
So at, at atom overview, we can see the product number, quantities, goods value, the currencies, net weight, gross weight, and the purchasing document number and country of origin. We can check at item level also. At item level also, we have all those information available. And you can see here the customs value that is coming from our ERP billing document. There are some other fields are also available here, like uh, delivery IDs and delivery items. We can uh, configure that and can customize as per our business requirement if they want to see any uh, specific document number from ERP system to give this customs invoice. So the next functionality which I want to show here is how this cancellation and reversal of customs invoice functionality works. I will again go back to ERP system and cancel this billing document. So this is my ERP system and I'm just canceling into a company billing document. It will create a credit memo. So so my intercompany billing document is cancelled. Let's see in the GTA system. So this is a very really second functionality of uh, customs invoice uh, integration in case uh, we cancel any billing document. So whichever billing document we have activated for customs invoice functionality, if that billing document is canceled in ERP system or feeder system, then reversal flag is set in customs invoice document. So this is very important because then user cannot refer this document or our patch or program will not refer this document for import declaration creation because data can change in ERP system after cancellation. User can change some data, maybe ship to party or build to party or some country of origin, any other thing, you can change the billing document. So this document, the GTS customs invoice document will not be available for user to create import declaration. So I will again go back to ERP system and uh, create uh, another billing document. So I'm creating new one. So once this intercompany billing document will be created, it will create a new customs invoice document number in GTS system. So my number is 9003955. I will copy it and paste it in GTS system. So now uh, system has created a new customs invoice document in GTS systems. So as we already seen other fields uh, in this document, the fields will remain same, data will remain same because we are not seeing any data in feeder system. So all the data will be updated here. General data item overview and yeah. Now, with reference to this customs invoice document, we will create import declaration. So we will go to that import section here. This is our import area and our customs invoice gets updated create declaration prior to goods receipt. Uh, before this functionality, as we already know that uh, we are using purchase order or inbound delivery to create import declaration, but now we have this new functionality available. We can create import declaration with reference to customs invoice document. So I will uh, enter my FTO here. And this is a new tab uh, I was talking about, uh, customs invoice. Here we can come and just paste our feeder system invoice document. And we have other parameters as well. Like if you have multiple customs invoices with reference to that, we want to create import declaration, then we can create your invoicing date from and to range. And then it will display all the work list entry for the customs invoices 
and we can create a combined import declaration as so let me execute this So this is a work list uh, entry which has got updated after customs invoice document created in GTA system. And uh, these are the number I was talking about, like first number is our feeder system, uh, billing document, intercompany billing document or commercial invoice number. And the another one is our customs invoice document in GTA system. So these both have got updated here. Our work list is updated. And with reference to this work list, we can create import declaration. That's been created 1300443. And uh, this is our import declaration. I think invoice uh, this invoice tab here. So it is showing QID, but yeah, let me change the settings here so it will show the number as well. Declaration this invoice number gets updated at header level as well as item level. So at header level, you can see here that invoice number, our feeder system, commercial invoice number. And uh, it gets updated in placement tab. Invoice number is updated in import declaration. And we can use like a customs invoice. This is like a terminology, commercial invoice to customs invoice. So this is also as updated here. So this is the third functionality. The first functionality, how customs invoice uh, is created in GTS system when we save any billing document in ERP system, which has been activated for customs invoice functionality. The second functionality is reversible functionality in case business user cancels a uh, billing document in feeder system, then immediately customs invoice in GTM will also get reversible flag so that Further, we cannot create import declaration for that customs invoice. And this is the third functionality where we can create import declaration with reference to the customs invoice work list entry. Uh, one more thing uh, about the function required for this uh, functionality setup. I think we can we skip that slide here. Yeah, so we, we, in addition to the system requirement here, you see here, with a, in addition to the system requirement for GTS 11 and service pack 6, we have to activate the billing document uh, in uh, ERP system. So whatever billing document can be intercompany billing document, and intercompany billing document is for STO purpose. And uh, once we activate that uh, billing document, then in GTS system, we have to create a new customs invoice document. We have to create a new number ranges. And then we have to assign the functions category to that uh, GTS invoice document, customs document that we can see here. So in the document section, you know, we have to define a new customs invoice document and uh, we have to assign the business document. Okay. Yeah, so that's a new configuration is updated in our DTS system uh, after this functionality gets updated. So this is very important, you know, that's why we need a service pack six upgrade. Once the service pack is applied, then only we will be able to see this new configuration for customs invoice. And uh, another configuration is assigning business category. So we have to assign the business document category for intercompany billing or customer invoice. 
configuration is activated, then uh, we can test this end to end functionality and this functionality will be available for us. We can modify as per our business requirement in case this functionality doesn't fit uh, using our API, which uh, we discussed in, as per our. So, in case uh, if there is any questions or okay, please let me know. Thanks, Ashish. Um, yeah, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box on your GoToWebinar panel. Um, also, feel free to follow up with us in an email or a phone call. Um, our information is displayed here. And if you have questions specifically for Ashish, I can um, forward them on since his information didn't make it to this slide. But um, it looks like we do have a few questions, Ashish. Um, so I'll go ahead and read them out loud and you can answer them to the best of your ability. Um, one of them is, can you have an intercompany invoice created with reference to sales order, then delivery? Will it create an import declaration? If we, can, we can set up that, but you know, as of now, SAP has given this functionality for intercompany stock transfer orders. I know uh, we are talking about your sales process. But as of now, this functionality is activated for intercompany stock transfer orders. Like you create a purchase order, from purchase order we create outbound delivery. But then we have another process like sales order, outbound delivery, and we create intercompany billing. Those intercompany billing, uh, we can create like a customs invoice document, but SAP may have, so far they have not uh, activated that functionality because purchase order may be the required document for that functionality. And purchase order is available only in intercompany stock transfer order. Okay, thanks. Another question is, what kind of information do you have under customs data tab? Under customs data tab? Yes. Uh, which field we are referring here? Customs data tab in GTA system. Uh, Instead of leaving the customs invoice document. Customs data type, I, I'm, I'm not able to figure out what this customs. Maybe this is one uh, we can get back to them in an email and give them more details yeah. rather than walking through the full system. Yeah, yeah okay. maybe you can tell us like which custom data you're referring here, then we can tell you. Sure, sure. So we'll be sure to follow up with you, Eliana, and um, should another question, um, which was also within the system. So we can follow up to both of those questions um, more detailed. Um, Another question was, will this process also work for external vendor shipments? See, uh, recently uh, we had a customer who has implemented this functionality, but uh, we'll have to do some customizations to work that process. It will not work as it is, but if it is available, because it's just a system architecture and the standard process is uh, supporting intercompany stock transfer, or you can activate customer invoices, which will create DTS customs invoice. But outside these functionalities, uh, we'll have to do some customization. Right, but we can do that customization for, for someone who would like it. Yeah. Um, another question is, do you think API can be used for intercompany invoices created with reference to SOs since billing doc is a reference? Yeah, that API can be used, yeah. We can feed data in the API, and then API can uh, create uh, customs invoice in GTS systems. Okay. Another question is, is it only for intercompany billing? Can we, uh, can we set it to use other vendor invoices, third party? Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, you know, so far this functionality is available for intercompany stock transfer order and uh, customers invoices. 
So in case we have to activate for other functionalities, then we we'll have to treat the configuration. Okay. Another question is, um, they mentioned uh, they didn't see any HTS codes in any of the slides. Is there a field to pull that information in? Yeah, HTS code will be, you know, uh, it is not coming from commercial invoice. So when we create import declaration, we have GTS master data. So HTS code will be coming in the import declaration, in import declaration, but in customs invoice, uh, we do not have that HTS code field. Okay. Um, the, a couple of questions about whether this webinar recording will be available. It will be available to everyone. Um, and I'll be sure to follow up with an email getting everyone the recording by the end of the day. Um, also, someone was asking where they can purchase the books at the beginning. Um, uh, Charles, to the gentleman who asked this question, um, we can follow up with a few links to where the books are available to be purchased. And as of right now, that is all the questions we have. Um, please, if anyone does have any questions outside of this webinar, feel free to address them in an email or a phone call. Um, we'd be happy to give you more details. Um, I'll follow up with everyone to make sure their questions were properly answered. Um, and we can have further discussion if, if you'd like more information or more details. Um, but just wanted to thank everyone for joining and thank you, Ashish, for presenting this webinar today. Um, and as I mentioned, I will be sending out an email by the end of today to get everyone a copy of this recording. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.